I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now, as you can probably tell, we're by the sea. We're going to be uh, walking uh, around about the area of West Lulworth in Dorset. It's a village about nine miles southwest of Wareham and 13 miles southeast of Dorchester on the Jurassic Coast. And we're going to be walking a roughly five mile circular ish route, starting at the iconic Durdle Door, heading east to Lulworth Cove, up to Bindon Hill, and back via West Lulworth. And there's certainly going to be lots to see, and we might even do a little detour further east, see if we can find a smuggler's cove, but uh, that depends on how the tide is doing. Now, I'm filming at the end of May very early in the morning because I'm starting off at Durdle Door. It's a very, very popular place for tourists. So well, it's just after seven o'clock now. We've pretty much got it to ourselves at the moment. So let's do a little exploration. With this particular walk, you can either start at Durdle Door or at Lulworth Cove where there's a car park as well. You can just see Durdle Door behind me. Let's have a closer look. Of course, it's one of the most photographed and iconic landmarks in Dorset. A natural limestone arch that was formed about 10,000 years ago. I always think it looks like a dragon drinking water. And the area here is actually on the Lulworth estate, which has been owned by the Weld family since 1641, I think. But fortunately, it is open to the public. It is a quite uh, magnificent site. Basically, there's a band of resistant rock that runs parallel to the shoreline here, behind which there's a, a weaker band of rock. I'll explain how it was formed later when we look at Lulworth Cove, but basically, this is well on the way to becoming a stack and then a stump. So at some stage, the arch will collapse, <laughs> which will somewhat spoil the photos for a few generations in years to come but I'll put a diagram up and then if I just pan the camera out you can see some rocks jutting out there to the west um, those are more of those resistant rocks I think one's called the bull there's the blind cow the cow and the calf and then to the east of here which we'll see shortly is the man o' war and then in a very far distance in the uh, hazy sunshine as the Isle of Portland which is uh, coming back to uh, Durdle Door itself of course it's often used as a, a film location for pop videos I think Tears for Fears came here and filmed uh, for their song Shout and um, of course Cliff Richard he filmed here his uh, video for his song Saviour's Day Uh, some fantastic caves right at the foot of the cliffs by Durdle Door which certainly demand exploration. I'll uh, stay out here, I'll send my faithful hound in just to uh, check things out but lots of interesting smells in there by the, the looks of things. Looks a bit dark. <laughs> Certainly a lovely place to sit as you can listen to the waves crashing against the uh, the beach. It's a lovely sound, isn't it? Mm. 
Had some fun on the beach. Now I need to leave Durdle Door and we've got a bit of an uphill bit. Okay, well, we're going to say goodbye to Durdle Door. Already a few people on the beach as I'm filming. It's actually on a Saturday and the forecast today is very good weather wise. So come here in three hours' time, this place will be absolutely heaving. So we're going to make our way uphill. Up some uh, quite steep steps. Fortunately, I've got a, a whip it with me to pull me up. Actually, just as I slowly pan round, conscious that the sun is still quite low. So hopefully, that's not going to go in the camera. It probably will. But this is just looking over to. I think this is Mano War Beach. We'll probably get a better view um, as we sort of head up along top of that ridge. We're going to head. Uh, eastwards to Lulworth Cove. But these rocks here are the Mano War rocks. And then this looks like um, the top of a, a World War II pillbox, doesn't it? I, looks like it's been filled in. I wonder if that's what it was. Must be. Obviously, defending the bay there. Don't know. Uh, one last look back at. Dirtle door. It is a lovely sight, isn't it? Because the daylight today, glorious sunshine, the sea is so blue. And uh, just looking at those cliffs there, you certainly get a feel for the, uh, the magic of the Jurassic Coast. It's such a beautiful bit of coastline. a little pit stop to admire the view. So Durdle Door is just uh, behind that bit of rock there and this bay here is called St Oswald's Bay I think. Lovely beach down there which I think you can still get to through down those steps and they're just panning across. Now these are the Man o' War rocks that I was talking about earlier. I think they're named after, well, because they look a bit like a 16th, 17th century Man o' War naval ship. I think that's the reason. Beautiful time to be out and about. Look at these wild flowers in bloom. No idea what they are, but gorgeous purple colour. We're on an uphill bit heading towards uh, Lulworth Cove. We're quite exposed up here, so apologies if there's a bit of wind noise on the audio. We're actually on uh, a section of the southwest coast path now, which is that 630 mile long distance path that starts at uh, Pool in Dorset and makes it all the way around to Minehead in Somerset. Ah, uh, sorry folks, <laughs> I've just got to stop and uh, just look back to the west and take this view in. Isn't it beautiful? And now the haze is beginning to lift. I can see much more of the uh, Isle of Portland over there. And um, the bit on the right obviously is uh, Weymouth. But uh, it's almost got a Mediterranean feel to it, the sea, hasn't it? Well, we're about halfway along the path to Lulworth Cove and I've done a little detour to the top of Hanbury Tout and there's an ancient burial mound here. I think it's a bell barrow, early to middle Bronze Age. It's about 22 metres in diameter and three metres high. And there's a ditch around it that's been partially filled in. 
the top is flat due to Victorian excavations. And there's a trig point here, which of course will have to be bagged in the customary manner. Well, I'm pleased to say we've got a downhill bit on our first sighting of Lulworth Cove. I just slowly uh, pan the camera around, conscious that the sun still is quite low. And there's the, the cove, which we'll be exploring shortly. And uh, there's the car park. Interesting, looking at a 1902 map, there was once a, a, a rifle range, Victorian rifle range, about 500 yards long, that sort of came up uh, the side of the valley. We're just about to uh, come into Lulworth Cove. You can see the path behind me that I've just come down. I don't know which is easier, going uphill or going downhill. I think my knees prefer going uphill. But as you can see, it's quite a, a nice, well-made path and uh, plenty wide enough. And it needs to be because uh, it does get quite busy. And as I said, as we go into Lulworth Cove now, probably be quite quiet now but uh, later on it will get busy. Well just to the west of Lulworth Cove is uh, Stair Hole which is just in front of me here. It's basically a small cove that's being formed and this is how Lulworth Cove started. And what you've got here is the, the hard Portland limestone being breached and the water getting through to the softer Purbeck limestone behind it. So in about 10,000 years time it will be a big cove. And look on the far side, you can see those wavy layers, that's known as the Lulworth Crumple. And 25 million years ago, <laughs> the African and European tectonic plates collided with each other and that created huge pressure that heaved and folded rocks that well, that's how the Alps were created. So by pushing up, the layers of rock go from being horizontal to nearly vertical, and therefore now the younger, softer rock is behind the older, harder rock. I'll give you a bit more science later on. It's uh, amazing to look at though, isn't it? Well, we're just gonna follow the little road that takes us to the cove. Lots of ice cream parlours and cafes here. And there's a, a heritage centre as well. And this building here is the uh, Lulworth Cove Inn that was once a stagecoach drop-off place where horses could be changed and mail delivered for the villagers. A lot of the spring flowers out in bloom. It's almost as if it's, everything's just waking up. Oh, look at this, Cove Cottage. Isn't that sweet? Oh, it looks as though um, it's a holiday let. Not 100% sure. And then just by it here, there's a, oh, another gorgeous little cottage and a little pond. There was a, a mill around here, so whether this had got anything to do with the mill, I don't know. Uh, these white buildings here, these must be the, the old Coast Guard cottages. They've got that, that look about them, haven't they? Yes. So well, well presented as well. Beautiful. Mill Pond Cottage. 
sometimes you look at these houses and it almost takes you back a century or two a uh, delightful little stream feeding into the cove i imagine that must come down from the old mill ponds a bit of lobster pot packed up on the side there and a lovely smell of fish and chips and pasties coming from there over there a bit too early i think <laughs> and just panning round this is our first sighting of the cove quite glorious in the morning sunshine now is he gonna have a paddle today it's warm enough and we're up to chest height whoa where we go he's having a think about it really is perfect for cooling down that's for sure he's not a natural swimmer but he does like a paddle yeah any fish in there? <laughs> and this is Lulworth Cove. You can see why it is so popular. So how was it formed? Well, a stream would have basically breached through the 30 metre band of hard Portland limestone. And then the sea would then have eroded through the 50 metre band of softer Purbeck limestone behind that and then eroded through the 300 to 500 metres of even softer clay and green sand until finally it got to the 250 metre band of harder chalk that effectively formed the back of the cove. And as the waves come in they diffract and so that's how you get this hollowing out effect. Does that make any sense? I'm no expert. stop to take in this wonderful view just seeing the yacht out there uh, reminds me well I've seen pictures in the past of paddle steamers that came from Weymouth and Bournemouth bringing uh, tourists in although obviously it started off life as a, a fishing village and then uh, wow, this enormous cliff face at the back. It, uh, it's one of those situations folks where again I can't put uh, words to the pictures. Now as we're going around the cove we're actually on the Hardy Way which is that 220 mile long distance path that winds its way through Dorset uh, linking places that had a connection with the author and poet Thomas Hardy and it starts at Higher Bockhampton where he was born and finishes at Stinsford Churchyard where his heart is buried. Well folks, it looks like we've got quite a challenge to get up off Lowworth Cove. Uh, anyway, that's where we're heading. Well, we're making our way up Bindon Hill. Now an old 1902 map shows earthworks about a mile long and there was a well, one rampart and a ditch that goes from Cockpit Hill to the east to Stair Hole in the west. And it originally enclosed something like 110 hectares. And its Iron Age uh, dates back to 400 BC, but because of its size, it's more likely to have been primarily an enclosed pasture area for livestock. Although at the western end, there might have been a hastily constructed fort uh, protecting or perhaps controlling the cove. Another little pit stop. <laughs> just, uh, just looking back at the cove, so we're on the eastern end, we're heading towards the fossil forest, which is our next destination. But I uh, see so you can't help but keep stopping from time to time just to take in some of these views. Well, right on the edge of the cove is this stone. It's called Pepler's Point, a memorial stone. 
and it's a war memorial to a chap called Sir George Pepler. Now who is he? Well he was uh, the founding member of the Town Planning Institute, uh, basically the professional body that represents town planning in the UK and he was responsible for preparing the Town and Country Planning Act in 1947 which basically inspired the concept of the Green Belt. What a lovely spot for a memorial stone. Well now this is an important part of the walk. Um, we've just come through a gate that's going to take us onto the, uh, the army ranges so you can only do this next part of the walk when the range is open to the public which is most weekends but not every weekend so do check out the website first. Right, Fossil Forest, 97 steps down and 97 steps back up. Oh dear. Well, that doesn't look too bad at the top bit. Let's go. Wow, well, this is amazing. This is the fossil forest. It's basically the remains of a submerged forest from the Jurassic times. And well, basically 144 million years ago, the, the sea level dropped and a, a number of islands emerged in the Purbeck area surrounded by a, a saline lagoon for a short period and soil formed and a, a tropical forest grew up. It then flooded under a shallow lagoon and the trees and roots became preserved by layers of calcareous sediment from the deposits from algae. So there are no actual remains of trees but these round shapes are sort of algal burrs that would have surrounded the base of the tree trunks. I think the scientific name is a thrombolite formed by the binding of sedimentary deposits from the microorganisms. <laughs> but basically it, it shows you where the trees actually were. And it is lovely that you can, can still come here because uh, there was a large rock fall here in about 2015 and it was only actually open again to the public uh, a couple of years ago. Well, just uh, an update on the route. This is about as far east as we're going to go. This is Mupe Bay down there. And right at the bottom, you can probably see a little cave. That is a smuggler's cave. And we're gonna see if we can climb down and have an exploration. Wish us luck, because it's a fair old uh, climb down. Well, folks, we've made our way down to the bottom of the cliff edge by Mute Bay. Now I was hoping to continue along round to see if I can find this smuggler's cave but I'm afraid I'm gonna to have to give up. It is just too rocky with all my camera gear and Logan struggling a bit it's not fair on him so but having said that this is a, a lovely spot to be. I say we would have to carry on scrambling over those rocks around the other side. I have seen some photographs of the cave and, and YouTube videos. It would have been a lovely place to explore, but there we go. But isn't this a quite gorgeous spot with the waves crashing against the rocks? I think I can just see on the horizon, there's a, looks like a, a, a sailing ship, one of those tall sailing ships. I'll see if I can get my uh, zoom camera out and uh, get a picture of it. Well we might have been unsuccessful in finding that smuggler's cave but just by coming down here beautiful uh, almost secluded beach I mean we've got it to ourselves. Well there is a chap out there in a speedboat coming towards us but uh, if we ignore him it's a, a little, little bit of paradise. <laughs> Well, we've 
have stopped for a little water break and just uh, taken a bit more of this final view looking over to the east oh there's someone down on our beach now <laughs> there's a southwest uh, coast path that goes all the way up that hill a few hardy walkers up there but we're now going to start heading say on a return journey back to uh, Lulworth Cove just on the path back to Lulworth Cove and uh, some deserted building here and I'm not sure what this is um, years gone by there was an abbey around here but I don't think this has got anything to do with it I think that was a little bit further along so I shall just point it out here even though I don't exactly know what it is now hopefully you'll be able to see this uh, this tiny little chapel that's hidden by trees um, now round about these parts uh, there was an abbey Bindon Abbey in fact a 1902 map shows the site of an abbey uh, the Abbey of Blessed Mary of Bindon it was built in 1149 but it wasn't there for long it was transferred to Wool which is further north from here in 1172 as it just wasn't big enough but uh, this little chapel was built in the 13th century and it was kept as a chapel of ease served by uh, the monks and used by them as a place of rest and uh, change of air as I say it's uh, it's tricky to see but lovely to see that it's still here and here we are back at Lulworth Cove rather nice uh, motor boat in the middle of the cove there all right so going to be fish and chips or a pasty oh, another bit of cooling down on the way back looks quite I would join you but I don't want to get my feet wet <laughs> well folks we uh, went for a pasty in the end which we shared and now we're in the uh, Lulworth Cove Inn, purely for research purposes for the video, of course, for a pint of Thirsty Ferret. Cheers. Well, folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment. And do check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. So from Lulworth Cove, until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. And I think today we'll leave the final word with Dirtle Door. <laughs>